turn to talk so I'm doing the inside and I'll start with the bedroom it's all sort of one big room though isn't it but I'll start with the master bedroom so this is our sleeping quarters the probably the hardest thing for storage are clothes because at the moment like you can see we're wearing hoodies because it's freezing but back home at the moment they're in a heat wave so we sort of had to pack for a lot of different conditions but like you can see, we've got all of our clothes around there. Trev's lucked out and he's only got one section and I've got three. But to be fair, these are nowhere near as big. And as you can see, like one winter jacket sort of takes up a whole section. So when you consider that we need summer gear, winter gear and togs and all of that stuff, I think we've done pretty well in culling. We've got these drop bear storage units as well. They're really good just for those bits and pieces like laptops and chargers and my side's more like hair clips and products and things like that that I might need over night time. Um, we've also got these bedside drawers, but they're pretty average in terms of how much storage you get out of them. I would have preferred to have a separate pull-out drawer. Like you can see Trev's is chocker block and mine's actually quite, mine's worse. I'll show you why. I wanted to sort of set up the van like realistically how we actually live so I didn't put things away so we actually live with things like this on my bedside table section because it's not really accessible so if you want to show them here Trev that's the gap because we put the bollard what's it called bollard in bolster, bolster yeah. in um the bed because Trev's a bit taller and honestly I think you need it even if you're not taller I'm 162 on a good day and I need it. My legs would be hanging off the edge. So Trev being over 180, you definitely need to use it. So Not in weight, in height. In height. So unfortunately you do lose that bit of space because the bed has come out that bit further to be a bit more comfortable. In hindsight, it would have been cool to do like a um, angled edge. That would have been nice because then you could have accessed that area. But like for me to use that space, I need to climb over the bed anyway. So I may as well just put storage stuff there. Um, my side is worse because I get all of the um, water tank hot, stuff. Yeah, hot the water hot water stuff. system. So I really can only put like a few shoes and gross stuff there. Um, yeah, so that's a shame. I do lose a little bit of storage there. But that's why we put this sort of stuff here. This aircon is awesome for up the other end of the van. We'll show you later and explain that Boston doesn't really get the air conditioning up that end very well. So we've got this cool little portable one. Um, I've also got just a box of like little bits and nicks and knacks there. So ooh, it's a shame that we lose that space, but we make up for it by putting things there that would have to go somewhere anyway. I'll let Trev talk about the battery system under the bed, but I'll just lift it up and quickly show you and he can talk about that later because I wanted to show you these for storage. These are awesome. These are just those shoe cabinets from Ikea that lots of people do the same thing with. And it allows us to do shoes. We have spare, like half dirty clothes, like um, jammies on each side and then like some winter gear there as well. It also lets you put things in the sides over here. The way we've done it, we've done it a little bit too close to fit a um, but a box of wine, but other people do that. If you move, oh, there's a little, is that a money spider? Hope so. Oh, that's a good luck. Maybe YouTube's gonna bring us money. <laughs> Maybe. So if you move those out slightly, you can fit a box of wine if that's your delight. But um, yeah, it would impede then on walking, but I love that because otherwise that's wasted space too. All right, um, we've got, yeah, just a standard TV. It's like a Kogan one, I think. It does the job, but it's pretty average, but whatever. Um, Do you want to explain the uh, washing line? Yeah, Trev installed this cool washing line, like what they have in the hotels for us. And that's super handy, especially on rainy days like today. We can hang some clothes on. I'll have to post a picture to the socials. It works really well. At the moment, obviously, you can see it's like that, but you just twist it and it tightens it up. Perfect. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll leave that. Okay, so Trevor will talk about all of our battery system, but that's that cupboard there and our hot water and water pump and things like that. Did I miss the carrot fan? Oh, sorry. Okay, 
okay so we'll use that when we're going through red dirt but we've already found that like things get a little bit dusty and dirty so it's pretty handy we got yep. that as an aftermarket and what does it do sucks uh, pressure pressure correct I'll yep. let you talk about that because yeah. I don't understand. Creates positive pressure within the van. Positive pressure in the van, which means I don't have to clean as much. So that's cool. Got the um, little, what do you call them? Sirocco fans as well, and they work pretty well. Okay. Yeah, so I'll let Trev talk about all this and our battery system. We um, obviously use access that cupboard all the time. And the trick that I found is we leave the door open when we've got the hot water on because it reminds us to turn it off. So that's a cool little trick for you. At the moment, the hot water is off, so shut the door. Okay, we use these as our pantries. It's pretty bare at the moment, we're a bit poor, but it gets pretty chock a block. It gets pretty busy and packed, but that's also partly to do with we have a child that's allergic to dairy, so we have a lot of stuff, unfortunately, that's sort of like his section versus our section. Obviously, we don't mind eating the way that he eats as well. But does make it that bit more challenging if we want something that has dairy in it so that fills up pretty quickly but enough storage for three people i don't know how other people do it but good on you so we've got a diesel heater i'll let trev talk about that later but that is doing really really well in heating up the van we were finding that we were using way too much power for heating with the aircon does a great job but sucks the power so we got a diesel heater and the advantage of that is we've actually got two outlets so one is down here I'll let Trev do a video of that later and one is down here and we can run a pipe which Trev will show you later as well um, to our the toddler's section his little room so that way he's got heat as well because he was getting quite cold okay what else have we got a good little drop air storage unit there for all of his crafty stuff this one just showing you all of our levels on our water tanks and our grey water. The grey water sensor is a bit dodgy. Um, so Trev obviously has to clean it quite often just so that we can actually tell if it's full or not. Because who knows at the moment it's saying it's a quarter slash half full. It keeps changing and it's not. Another little um, drop bear there. Yeah, this one I think we could probably utilise better at the moment. It's just salt and pepper. It's got like yeah some fusion lock stuff there if you saw for like fruit and veg and stuff and some more craft stuff that's handy because i still want to have like fruit out so that the toddler wants that over sugary rubbish um so it's nice to have that visible he's got a cute little placement as well but certainly doesn't need it because these clean so well he draws on that and everything and it comes off just with baby wipes so easily so really good surface to have um okay kitchen We've done everything here. Obviously, people know this moves and stuff, hey, so mm -hmm. we've just got it in a good position for us. Okay, so kitchen. I don't cook very much. I'm more the cleaner. It's not very clean at the moment, though. Sorry, guys. Um, but, yeah, Trev's all over this. We don't use this very much because we use the Weber. Mm -hmm. So it's great and really good for rainy days. Sorry, the Weber. Oh, the Ziggy. We used to have a Weber. We talked about it in the last video why we switched. Um, but it is really handy and good storage too. <laughs> we actually keep our son's EpiPen in here. I'd love to know if any other caravan families have an EpiPen. Hit us up in the comments if you do because I'm really interested in where you store it because it's meant to be in a certain range of degrees and the fridge and freezer are way too cold for that. And obviously we know living in vans it gets really, really hot and really, really cold. So I was trying to find the most stable environment for it and obviously not when we're using the grill but when we're not using it it's pretty like room temperature ish like a house would be so i keep his epipen in there but let us know if you're especially if you're a caravanning family where you keep your epipen because that's been a bit of a challenge all right so yeah that's got everything you need for all the different cooking three gas styles. and one electric yep we don't use that very much though so. The Ziggy does the job. Um, we opted to take out the oven underneath. You're right, Baba. Okay, soon we got the toddler just watching the iPad. You're right. Yeah, he's right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we took the oven out because then that's the only deep drawer that you get for those bigger things like the toaster and all of that stuff. So 
um, we're happy with that decision because we can do everything in the Ziggy that we would do in the oven. Anyway, um, we use this space for all of our cleaning products and stuff. Okay, camera angle change. So then we just put all of our other kitchen goods in there. These unfortunately don't have a lot of space because we've got the water pump under there. Trev might do a little overlay of that. We've also got um, the wheel arches in there. So that takes up a lot of space. So people have gone higher, like great idea. We just didn't because it would just make the van even higher. And like, it's already a struggle for me to get in, let's be honest, I'm a bit short. But yeah, it does take away from that storage a bit, but it's not too bad, not too bad. Cutlery and all the usual stuff. This is um, really good. People use it as a pantry, but we use those. So this is like our alcohol type section, which is pretty cool. Um, a coffee machine. Trev's just done like a just a cheapy job of strapping it in, but it does the job at the moment. It's rubbing on the wall a bit, but it just rubs off, so that's good. Um, we love our coffee machine, the Euro, however you say it, but it is cracking, so obviously it's not designed to travel with. But so far, so good. We've just taped it up, and there's no leakage. Um, we went with all the black stuff, and I think it looks great. I've had a few people say, "Careful, it scratches." Well. <laughs> I've left a lot of dishes while we've been traveling and I haven't had a single scratch. I usually, when the dishes are clean in this bad boy, I'll put in a tea towel just to line it like that. And that obviously has no issues, but even when I don't do that, it's been fine. So, so far so good. Um, we went with the water filter as well. Highly recommend just for that peace of mind. More fusion lock stuff there. I'm very, very allergic to mosquitoes at the moment, so I'm trying a few different options. But if you've got like a surefire hit, hit me up in the comments, please, because you can see these are like my grab and go section because I'm like dying of mosquito bites. Okay, having a toddler unfortunately means like this whole section is taken up with like nappies, wipes, medicines, all the things he needs because he's a very sensitive soul. Um, but you know, that's not forever all the power to you if you've got a few um, babies, especially in different size nappies, because we only have to store the one size and it's already hard enough, let me tell you. Coffee section, that at least um, doesn't have as much stuff in it. Plenty more room in there if we needed to put more stuff in. Uh, microwave, highly suggest using that as a storage section as well. That's our bottle sterilizer. So that's a great spot for that to live permanently. Pretty much we take the microwave plate out and put it under the pillows when we travel might do like a travel video too hey babe yep like this is how we pack up yeah, yeah great idea okay um yeah more fusion lock it's all right but it comes loose a little bit some of them like are a hundred percent will never move and others not as happy so i don't know maybe it's the surface or the cleanliness of the surface or whatever but interestingly yeah these two struggle a little bit but all of our other ones are great so i don't know maybe it's a bit of movement there this is good for your bottles and stuff. Um, what else? Oh, this is our Starlink unit. We got that recently. So we're still working out like how to have it running. We've got it through here, but we don't want to break it because Sarah and Keelan broke theirs and it's like a hundred and something dollars to replace and we do not want that. So we'll um, work out a bit more of a system there. I think I've done this area all standard, like opens. We've got a little mirror there that you've stuck on the wall. Yeah, that's just from Ikea and it hasn't bunched at all. Hey, we've got a couple of them. Right. And they're super lightweight and yeah, like a bit scary if it fell off and broke. No, super easy and just makes the space feel that big, bigger. I've seen um, traveling family happy, hey, feel good family, feel good family. They did um, Ikea like little ones and they're so cute and they just make the space feel bigger. A few of like our fake plants and stuff there from Ikea and that, so yeah, just to make it feel a bit more homely, but you do you, heaps of people have pictures up and that makes it feel more homely, so whatever floats your boat. Hey, um, this drop bear is really good because it's got, yeah, just those things that aren't in, are a bit in the way and don't necessarily fit anywhere really easily, like your chopping boards. You could even put like heavier, nice, like wooden ones in there too. More nappy and wipe storage. That is like such an awesome cabinet for how deep it goes and everything. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately we can't utilize it much more than toddler life. Do you want to let them know about 
your um, items that you've got up there protected? Yeah, I've got um, things that we need, like paperwork that we need up there. I probably need to put the anaphylaxis plan up there too. Um, just things that I really don't want to get wet. So I put nappies around them because then I figure if there's any issue, hopefully the nap we'd figure it out and hopefully the nappies would absorb some of the wetness. Anyway, the moisture, that might be a better word. All right, so we got a good size fridge and freezer. We need to do the defrost. Apparently that's quite common with the Dometic fridge freezer, um, but it's still fine at the moment. Like you can see heaps of room. We need to do a shop because there's not much stuff. But yeah, heaps of room. Even Boston has like an entire shelf, as you can see, and there's still plenty of room for us. Um, yeah, this is great. I'm glad we went with this and not the fabric one because it really locks in and does a great job. Having said that, though, we're finding then. You right, darling? He's fine. We're finding that the air conditioning doesn't then get to him. So that's why we said we've got a little separate unit that doesn't suck much power at all. We also had a separate heating unit that did suck a lot of power. So that's why we've gone with the diesel heater. It will run then like a tubing system under here and works great. His area is nice and warm. But this is great because then we can watch TV and not like bother him when he goes to bed. I'm glad we definitely went with that one, hey babe? Yep. Oh, we just put books and stuff down there because obviously, you know, doing caravanning, you want the heavier stuff at the bottom. And then he can open that and help himself to some books because he's real into his reading at the moment. All right, shower. So our first modification to the shower was definitely a bath for Bossy Boy. So yeah, we just couldn't shower with him every night too hard. So we did like a pop-out bath and we've done a cool little storage unit. People just leave them up, but I prefer it out of the way like that. It does need a good clean though, because like you can see the water catches in it a lot. But I'll show you, it's super simple. We just slide it out when it's bath time. And there we go, he's good to go. The only um, disadvantage of it being obviously collapsible is that it gets a lot of moisture, so it needs a lot of regular cleaning, which it's due for now. Super easy to pop away behind that as well, and just really cheap, simple, easy way to store it. Went with the black again in here, like you can see. Works really well. Fusion lock stuff, stores all of our stuff easily. And that's really handy for Boston stuff as well. I don't even use it as a water pourer because he's got grommets, so we can't get his ears like properly submerged wet. So I just use it as storage. Got little exhaust systems on. Is it too loud? I might turn them off. There you go. It's as simple as that. We also wrote on their O for open because I always turned them the wrong way and I broke one of them. Hey, um, toilet. We don't have the unit that everyone's getting. We've just got the ordinary blue stuff and canister and it works fine and mostly travel empty that one thanks babe okay so like you can see pretty standard we got the black tapper again really happy with that it is easy to clean and no scratches or anything so far so good these towels are really really good we had our normal like bath sheets and they took up so much room they were so comfy but they were out to like here so we got the tessellate towels because they dry really easy and quickly so they don't get too smelly and um they don't take up much room there because it is hard i don't know how people do it with big families we've only got three towels for three people and yeah like you can see it takes up that whole space we got this cool little decal for measuring how tall bossy gets while we're away and us i'm still hopeful that i'm growing and we'll see um that is another ikea one just to make it feel bigger not that you need to see yourself like the, the back of your head while you're on the toilet but this is really handy for this is like our closest to a full length mirror that we've got the closest thing some people have that on their shower but ours didn't allow for that so yeah that's our full length mirror um storage is average in here it'd be nice to have more but it does the job like medicines and things and then makeup and stuff like that in there doesn't allow for many extra towels or bedding and then our toilet chemicals, toilet paper, tissues, etc., all fit in there, no dramas, so that's good. And yeah, when it's a bit smelly, just flick that on and off you go. Fun 
shut as well. But honestly, your legs hit that when you're on the toilet. So if no one's in the shower using this area, we'll shut this one instead. So then you've got this more room, you know, it's a bit nicer. But you can fit. The reason why we did the separate toilet and shower is so that one person can be on the toilet and the other one can be in the shower. We've got more room and less um, moisture in one space. Like you can see moisture is an issue in here. I think that's it for... Oh, we normally put our dirty clothes down here as well. We've got a dirty clothes basket that's outside at the moment because we're doing our washing, but that fits perfectly up the side there. Whoa, so drop the phone. Oh, so I suggest you get um, like one of those flexi like baskets, like ours is a woven one. Maybe I'll put a picture in here. Um, and that fits up the, that fits up the side in there perfectly. Okay, um, bunk beds and that'll be it. So we got two bunks, but we've only got one child. We were told to get two because the resale on one bunk is really difficult because most put, people have more than one child or more than one grandchild or whatever. So a bit tricky to do um, the resale on one. And it makes sense if we'd done one, we could have like packed up here with um, cupboards and stuff, but we sort of just chuck everything up there anyway. So just works out better. All right, so Bossy's um, bunk and we've done this awesome netting system that's only just starting to break now after six months so i think it's done pretty well especially because he's so rough on it it's getting a bit stuck now so we need to get another one it's getting a little bit mm. of damage but yeah awesome because he can't fall out it's great for peace of mind we started with the toddler rail um but yeah no, he could just get out of that for sure he's pretty crazy so definitely suggest netting for a toddler and then the toddler rail for maybe those older toddlers almost in school I guess and Trev's just showing you what we've done with the top bunk we've mostly just made it into storage there's a big suitcase full of like winter woolies which we didn't look in yesterday so we need to do that mm -hmm. um there's yeah just toys and stuff up there bigger toys there's some pool noodles there for an upcoming project watch this space and that black tube that was for the diesel heater as well um we took out all of our blinds as well because the blackout does a good enough job if you can see even with the light on um but boston's just worked out how to open them and that's frustrating so any other parents out there tell me what you've done to stop your child from doing that because it's really annoying because if he does it when he goes to bed, then it's like that all night. And then he wakes up early. And that space on the end of the bunk? This one? Yep. Yes, yeah, so we've done another net there because he was getting into all of his sleep type stuff. Like we've got a little glow dreaming, which is just that white noise or pink noise system. And he was just playing with it. So we've done a net system and now he starts opening the net. We have done a little lock. Just a little bunnies, a couple of doors off, and he can't open. Um, there's more storage in there for those sweet suits for the really, really old temperatures, but we haven't needed them, so that's good. Um, and this is his only section for clothes. All of his clothes live in there. It's pretty deep though, so he's got plenty of room. Um, that's just from Ikea and I snapped the handle off already but it comes with a really cool handle so you can pull out all of his clothes. Okay so I've been handed the reins to talk about our battery system so we run uh, a Victron system as you can see we're plugged into um, shore power at the moment so we're on a storage mode but we are getting 252 watts of solar. Uh, that is one thing that we uh, wish we did a bit better our solar system, we only have 450 watts on the roof uh, and we have a 120 watt panel that we do plug in externally. We are looking at upgrading to a 300 watt um, solar blanket just, just to give us, you know, up, up in that 700 region because some of the power that we use, we're not replenishing it. And, you know, we're, we're finding by day four, it already looks like we need to go and get power. So. Um, yeah, so I'll just quickly mention what the battery system consists of uh, for people that are interested. So full Victron system other than the batteries. Uh, this was all installed by uh, On Track Electrical on the Gold Coast. Uh, they do a really good job. So we've got three 
DCS 200 amp lithium batteries uh, in an EC off-road uh, holder. Um, that gives us 600 amps of lithium. Um, this big blue bugger here, this is our Multi Plus 3000. Uh, so it's a 3000 watt inverter and it also uh, is our charger of 120 amps uh, an hour. This thing pumps the power in. Um, when we're down, I think we were at about 30% and we plugged in, we got to 100% in about, I think, four hours. It, it honestly pumps it in. Um, at the back here, we've got two, um, two smart DC to DC chargers, both 30 amp. So when we're driving, we can pump 60 amps of um, charge in. We've got our 50 amp uh, smart solar charger that, um, that gives us plenty of um, space if we wanted to add more um, solar to the roof. Uh, and down here, you've got your Serbo GX, which talks to the system that we were just looking at, that, um, that little LCD, uh, LCD panel. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, please subscribe to our channel. That would be so amazing. We've had an awesome time here in West Wyalong and um, can't wait to get to the coastline, though. Hey, we really love the beach. Yep. So hopefully we get to meet some of you while we're out and about or at least talk to you and hear your tips and tricks, too. So see you later.